is me, about to dive through this deadly underwater canyon in a homemade submarine. In fact, it's so dangerous that the authorities have banned anyone from entering without a license. But I'm not anyone. I'm the guy who's about to build a mini submarine with no experience, go through grueling training, then drive it through the entire canyon with only 10 days of preparation. And there are so many things that could go wrong. Because the canyon is filled with freezing glacial water and it's over 200 feet deep. So I decided to put together a three-step plan to hopefully pull this off. Starting with level one, building the submarine. I am the last person who should be building a submarine. So luckily I have my friend, Mr. GPT here. To build a fully functioning mini submarine takes an abundance of skill, knowledge, and a budget of around $2 million. Yeah, this was gonna be a lot more difficult than I thought. First of all, there is a chance I'll drown or die from hypothermia. Tragically, this has happened a few times at the canyon. I could also get arrested since it has 24-7 surveillance and it is illegal to dive without a licensed instructor. And there's a high chance my submarine will break under the insane underwater pressure. Essentially, this is what would happen if I tried to build an airtight submarine myself. So I quickly sketched up a plan for what is called a wet submarine, meaning it would be fully open and I would need a scuba suit to breathe. I have no idea how I'm gonna get scuba gear, but I'm just gonna have to put that aside for now. I'll also need to add some propellers to the submarine to make sure it actually moves around underwater. So I quickly placed an order online for this underwater scooter that should work as a propeller. It'll be arriving in a few days. In the meantime, I need to find some object to start building the submarine around. So I'm thinking that thing is a kid's bike. So I opened up Facebook Marketplace and immediately found the perfect bike. So that same day, I went to check it out. Hello, Hi. here to check out a bike. And there she was. It looked beautiful. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, submarine. I'm not sure she fully understood, but that's okay because I got myself a princess bike, baby. Check this out. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, boy. Oh, I got a crap. <laughs> The foundation is set, but this is nowhere close to being a submarine. So I headed to the hardware shop to grab the rest of the materials needed. As an inexperienced builder, the sheer variety of different materials got me very overwhelmed. But then I came across these pool moons. Not sure what to do with them, but they're yellow and cool. Might come in handy. Also grabbed some plexiglass for the submarine windshield. Then I got this thing and that thing. Found some pipes as well because submarines are pipey. <laughs> Now it's just time to somehow turn it into a submarine. So you might be thinking, Sintre, how are you gonna turn all of this junk into a submarine? Well, I got some tape right here, so I'm thinking of just kinda... That could've killed me. <laughs> Let's try something else. It's time to bring in... <laughs> So I basically just drilled holes into the plastic sheet. Then I attached it together with zip ties. It's stuck. Then it was time to attach the front part with some more drilling, then more zip ties. Next I attached the windshield. However, it was clear the plexiglass didn't love my drilling and it started cracking a lot. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. But I decided to go ahead and tie it anyways because I just somehow felt confident it would hold. It didn't hold. So I quickly attached some new zip ties, but I could hear the glass breaking every time I moved the submarine. It wasn't looking like the submarine would survive underwater. And on top of that, I got a message that the propellers had been delayed and wouldn't be arriving until the morning of my dive. But I had to worry about that later because my submarine was currently falling apart. So I bought two more of these tubey things and also another top, which I attached to the back with drill drill and tie tie. Then I attached the tubes to each end of the submarine to hold it all together. This baby is sort of starting to look like a submarine, but we still need to color it. And luckily I bought these yellow plastic table covers. However, I have no idea if they will stay intact underwater. To finish off the submarine, I worked on a little thing called buoyancy. For the sub to remain stable underwater, it needs to essentially be weightless. And to accomplish that, I would need a lot of bottles filled with air. So I just started jamming those bottles into the pipe. Finally, I decided to add a SpongeBob ornament for a little more pizzazz. With seven days until dive day, the sub was looking beautiful. However, I still had absolutely no idea if the submarine would actually work, especially since I still don't have my propellers. Also, I'm pretty worried about how difficult it was to get out of the submarine on dry land, but there's no time to worry about that because it's time for the second step of my plan, training. The only way to get scuba gear and to legally dive at the canyon is to get a scuba instructor to train me and then take me there. So I just started calling every scuba instructor in the country. Is there any chance you can help me dive with a homemade submarine? 
Is there any chance that can work or... Well, it's not like a submarine submarine, but like... I was getting rejected left and right, and it was all seeming a bit hopeless, which made me really sad because it's been a dream of mine to dive through that canyon for a long time. The canyon actually has the clearest water visibility in the world, and people say that diving through it can't be compared to anything else. But I got a glimmer of hope that evening when by sheer luck, I figured out that there was one more instructor that I hadn't called yet. So I scheduled a meeting with him the next day. Okay, this is it. The last guide in the country. If he can't help me, then this is all over. I was feeling so insanely stressed. Hi, Siggy. This is Siggy, who not only is a certified scuba instructor, he's also a certified badass. Inside, he showed me a lot of cool things, like some epic diving photos. Also, his entire underwater camera equipment. So cool. And what I can only describe as a diving kitty. But it's time to get down to business. My idea is basically to take this small homemade submarine and dive it in between the tectonic plates, mm -hmm. uh, like from start to finish. Is that maybe something you could help us with? Uh, so diving, you know, especially for a beginner is, yeah. can be really hard. Okay. And if you add a, a homemade uh, submarine, it makes yeah, it tricky. Yeah, it okay. makes it really tricky. So you are really in, in for uh, adventure, I think. Okay, well, I like adventure. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like them also. Wait, he might actually agree to this. So we can we can try that. We're in. Okay, okay, great. So I it's mean... going to be fun at least. Yeah. I'm doing a standard open water course next Saturday. Yeah. Apparently the course will go over standard things like now to empty water out of your mask if it floods. We have to practice out of air emergencies. There is a possibility. I gotta admit, at this point I kind of started zoning out because all I could think about was if this was a bad idea. There's a pretty good chance this ends badly, and I was very stressed about passing this scuba training. But there's no time to think about that now because we. We got a scuba instructor, baby. So with two days to go, I showed up in an indoor pool for a grueling six hour scuba diving course that I needed to pass to be allowed to dive my submarine at the canyon. So I suited up. However, it was very tight and I couldn't figure out how to fit my head through it until Siki said, I guess that settles it. Then it's just the oxygen tank, which was insanely heavy, like so heavy. But, uh, <laughs> what I meant to say was let the training begin. So I jumped into the pool because it was time to go underwater. However, it turned out to be very difficult for me. I was simply too buoyant for some reason and couldn't submerge. Siki literally had to hold me down and try to get me to sink. I was also having trouble breathing and controlling my movements and it was just a complete mess. I'm realizing that this is gonna be a lot more difficult than I thought. It really wasn't looking good for my scuba certification. If I can't even dive on my own without a submarine, then I can forget this dream. So I simply decided to get it together and give this everything I could. For my first test, I had to do a 360 degree back roll into the water. Damn, that was cool. And it gave me the confidence to keep going. Next, I had to remove my regulator and put it back into my mouth. I nailed that. Siki even gave me a little clap. Then I had to successfully hover, which according to Siki means... Staying like this. Okay, so let's try that. Ha! Easy. And finally, I had to rescue a diver who was out of oxygen, which was honestly pretty hard. Oh, look, that's Siki! I was finally getting the hang of it. I was moving around like it was nothing, and it was honestly so much fun. Wouldn't you know it, I got my certification! So with my training completed, there's only one thing left to do. It's time to dive the submarine. But first, I just want to say that I have a goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I've been making videos for as long as I can remember, and doing YouTube has been an absolute dream come true. We're currently halfway to 100k, so it would mean the world to me if you would help me out and subscribe. On the morning of my dive, I got out of bed and checked the submarine, only to find that it was slowly falling apart. This had me very worried about the dive. I decided to quickly do some damage control, and I super glued all the loose parts to the submarine, which hopefully will hold. But on a positive note, the propeller finally finally arrived. So I put it on my trailer along with the submarine and drove off towards the canyon. I could only hope the submarine would still be intact after this road trip. To get to the canyon, I had to drive way into the actual middle of nowhere. And after a long trip, we had made it as far as we could drive and we had to walk the rest of the way. So I took out the submarine and I was praying it was intact. And yeah, it definitely wasn't. Oh, that's terrible. The windshield was destroyed. <sighs> Luckily, I did bring an extra windshield just in case this would happen, so I quickly ripped apart the broken windshield. 
then thrill, then sip, and bam, replaced it in record time. Now we can go to the canyon. The whole hike was just complete wilderness, and it really started sinking in that if something went badly wrong, the only way to get me would be by helicopter. And judging by my balance, I'm not liking my odds. <laughs> However, after a long and difficult hike, we finally arrived. Okay. <laughs> It's genuinely freezing. So yet again, I suited up and put on all my scuba gear. This is really heavy and restricting. And apparently we're gonna jump in. That's the only way in. Oh my God. Siggy was first to jump in and he made it seem like nothing. Then it was my turn. The last time I jumped off of a cliff into ice cold water, I, I almost drowned, so. Now that I'm in the water, there's no turning back. This is crazy. The only way home is through the canyon. With everything ready, we lowered the submarine into the canyon. It turns out that the bottles worked a bit too well and the submarine just floated there. I could only hope it would sink once I got inside. So we quickly attached the propeller to the back of the sub and then there was only one thing left to do. I was doing it, it was working. Until the submarine suddenly shifted dramatically to the side and things started falling off, and then I fell off. We figured the sub was floating way too much and therefore unstable, so we removed the air pipes and finally the submarine started sinking, so I jumped in. This time it was looking really good, for about three seconds until the windshield completely shattered. But it's fine, who needs a windshield? We're underwater, there's no wind. But that's when the submarine started doing a barrel roll. I was using all the strength in my body to stabilize it and get it going, but it's just sinking further and further. I was getting thrown around all over the place, plexiglass was flying everywhere. Then I jumped back in, but it's too late. The submarine is heading for the bottom, 30 feet underwater. It was just a complete disaster. This was all seeming so hopeless, but I can't give up yet. Let's go try it one more time. So I dove back to the bottom and did an epic jump into the submarine. At this point, Siki signals me to inflate my West in order to pull up the submarine, and it starts working. The submarine is leveled off and it's moving forward. One of the best moments in life is when you give everything you have to a dream, you push through failures, train endlessly, and then after all that work, you finally achieve that dream. However, this was not one of those moments. Uh, I don't know what to say. I hate feeling like this. It's the worst feeling. It's just really... So much work. A big part of the reason why I make YouTube videos is to attempt the impossible, to show you guys that if you set your mind to it, anything is possible. But with this failure, I really felt like I let all of you guys down. But then, in a moment of clarity, I realized that just because I failed, it didn't mean it was all for nothing. This doesn't need to be the end. I could still go through the canyon with my scuba gear alone. So I dove back in and went for it. And what you're about to see is one of the most beautiful and serene moments of my life. 